What's up, you guys? It's Coach Erica from Champion Gymnastics. I just wanted to give a warm hello and shout out to my tumblers, who I miss so, so, so much. <laughs> um, I never thought for one minute that I would have to coach virtually, um, but due to the circumstances, here we are. This is the best we got, right? Um, I hope that you've all been safe, healthy, happy, and have been able to spend quality time with your families. And I truly hope that you've been able to make the most of the situation because I, for one, know how, uh, how bored I am without you guys. You guys are truly a light in my life and in the community. And uh, it just reassures me that I have the best job in the world to be around people like you, you know, all the time. And uh, I can't wait for that moment when we're back in the gym and get to progress our skills. Um, but for right now, my backyard and a beach towel is the best that we can do. Um, so I'm going to kind of be going through a couple things with you guys to do at home. Usually we do not recommend doing gymnastics at home for your safety, but again, due to the circumstances, I think we'll let this one slide. Um, so my tumblers know that I always talk about the importance of a handstand. Handstands are super important in tumbling because most of your skills pass through handstand. Um, whether that be a cartwheel, a back walkover, front walkover, round off, back handspring, front handspring, all those skills pass through a handstand. So it's super important that we are able to do a clean vertical handstand. Now there are certain things that you can do to strengthen this or there are certain things that you could do to progress up to it. But my challenge to you guys, and I think you knew this, was uh, holding a handstand without moving your hands, without walking for five seconds. So if you can already do that, then move up to 10 and just keep adding five seconds. But my goal or my challenge to you is five seconds without moving your hands. And if you hit that five seconds without walking, be sure to send in a video of you doing it to our Instagram, which is at CGS Utah in all caps and um, send it in. And we'd love to see those videos of you guys holding your handstands. So here are just um, little quick tips and things that help me do handstands that you guys can practice at home to better your handstands. Um, so the first thing, sorry, again, there's like a truck in the background. Um, it's dirty out here. I haven't swept, but the lighting's bad. But anyway, um, my first tip to you guys um, is hands. When you're doing a handstand, I, don't, I can't even flip the camera, but um, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna bend your knuckles like this, your middle knuckle, um, when you're pushing into the floor. See how my fingers kind of turn white because I'm pushing them into the floor. That's what you're gonna wanna do. Okay, so they're bent. That'll give you um, nice balance when your hand's on the floor. Um, you're going to lean your shoulders over your wrists when you're doing a handstand um, because your, your shoulders are gonna take most of the heat when you're doing a handstand. So make sure your shoulders is over wrist and then your fingers are pushing into the ground. So before we get into this, let me set this back up because I made a whole video and then my phone died and it was super depressing in the middle of the video, but we're okay, we're back. I'm charging it right now as we speak. So why don't we start off by um, stretching our wrists out a little bit so that we don't hurt our wrists um, while we're doing our handstands. Um, and hold for five seconds, five, and flip, five, and other hand, two, four, five, and my husband's coming out aside. I'm just making YouTube videos for the kids, and flip, and then we're gonna stretch our shoulders, pulling to the side. <laughs> Sorry about that. And other arm. And over your head. My shirt's tucked in. Looking real cute. And 
other side. All right, good, because our shoulders are going to take most of the heat when we're doing our handstands because you're going to want to be pushing super, super tall like you're holding a giant weight over your head. All right, so there are a couple things that you can do to progress to a handstand. First and foremost is um, a tripod. Tripod turns into a headstand. A, he a headstand turns into a handstand against the wall. A handstand against the wall turns free range handstand. And then your free range handstand turns into just adding the seconds up. So let's start with a tripod. Hopefully you guys can see me. Might be a little sunny. A tripod is going to be a headstand, but with your knees on top of your uh, elbows. So for a tripod, you want to make a triangle with your head and your hands, with your hands in front of your head a little bit. You want to be on top of your head, not in the front because you don't want to push your head back and hurt the back of your neck. And you don't want to be on the back of your head because you don't want to roll over. So you want to be on top of your head. You're going to put your hands down and then you're going to put your head slightly in front of your hands. Okay. And you're going to put one knee up and then the other knee and try to hold. and just come down nice and easy. Once you have that, then you can go for a headstand. A, hand, a headstand is just a tripod, but your legs are gonna go up to the ceiling, vertical. While you're doing this, you wanna squeeze your bum and your core so that you don't tip over. So again, you're gonna have tri make a triangle with your hands and your head. And you're gonna hit your tripod and go up nice and slow. either step down like I just did or tuck your knees in. Okay, the next one would be to do a handstand against the wall. You can start with your back against the wall, but what's important about that is you keep your back nice and flat. You don't want to be archy. You don't want your back to be like this when you're doing a handstand. You want it flat. So from your toes all the way to your wrists, ankles over knees, knees over hips, hips over shoulders, shoulders over elbows, and elbows over wrists. So it's just gonna be a straight line all the way up. Okay, and if that's easy and you're flat, then you can try a handstand against the wall on your stomach. So it's not, your stomach's not gonna be touching the wall, but your stomach's gonna be facing the wall. You want your nose to touch the wall, and your toes to touch the wall only and see if you can hold that my tumblers have made it up to 30 seconds now let's see if you guys can get a minute handstand against the wall that's a good conditioning exercise to strengthen your shoulders and then we're going to go into a free range handstand and my tumblers have been working hard on proper technique going into a handstand so we're gonna start with our eight count lunges. Your arms are gonna be up. Your favorite leg or your good leg is gonna be in front. If you don't know which is your good leg, you can figure that out by having someone stand behind you and lightly, lightly push you forward. Whatever foot you step forward with, that could be your good leg. Or you can see which leg you kick a ball with uh, or push off a skateboard with. Now, those are all tools to help you figure out which is your favorite leg. Um, water skiing or wakeboarding. I grew up in California. I don't know what I just did there. Snowboarding. Um, but uh, interestingly enough, I kick a ball with my right and I do gymnastics with my left. So my left leg is going to be forward. So your arms are going to be up. Good leg forward. You're going to lift your leg up. One, two. This is called a lunge three, four, we're going to go into our T lever, going to look like a T, your bottom leg stays bent, five, six, and then come down, seven, back into lunge, finish eight. Okay, 
you can do five of those on your good leg. And then we'll go into a needle kick. This, this, type, of, this type of needle kick is gonna um, keep your leg bent until you kick as high as you can, then your leg straightens out. So again, come back, lunge, lunge, needle kick, my leg straightened, and I come back up. My arms are trying to stay by my ears. Sorry if that didn't look the best. In my older age of 27, it doesn't look as good because I'm a little stiffer than I used to be, but again, this is what we're working with. Um, the goal of a needle kick is to try to get your leg up to vertical. So towards the ceiling or towards the sky, because that is going to act as your half handstand. Your body during a handstand is like your machine. When I'm going up into a handstand, my, my good leg or my favorite leg is pushing me up. It's the powerhouse and this back leg that I needle with is kicking me up to vertical. So the more that your legs do, the easier it is gonna, um, easier it's gonna be to kick up to handstand. Um, then when you're in the handstand, you're gonna push your belly button up to the ceiling as high as you can. So suck in, push it up. You're gonna push down with your shoulders. You're gonna look at your fingers, okay? You're gonna look at your fingers but not have your head out. This is head out, this is head up. We want head up looking at our fingers when we're in handstand. The goal again is to be super, super flat. So let's use our machine. We're gonna, we're gonna go through it proper technique with arms up, holding one, two, lunging three, four, this one you're gonna pass through the lever. You do not have to hold it because you wanna use your legs to get you up to the handstand. One, two, three, four, and kick. My arms stay by my ears. Okay? So that wasn't five seconds. So the goal is five seconds. So let's see if we can hit it. Trying to get your hands down as close to the floor as you can before you kick up because you don't want to dive onto your hands. So get low with this lunge so that you can kick up. Oh, come on. One, two, three, four, five. Woo. Yeah, that was a little out of form. So I'm gonna try again, but if not, I did hit it, but I held that split a little too long. You wanna to get to that position as quick as you can and stay there. Oh. <laughs> See how I walked my hand that time? We're trying not to do that. One more try for the sake of you guys. My boss is gonna be super disappointed in me. All right, I'm gonna keep trying. This is unacceptable, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just keep practicing. It's, it's so good for you. It's strengthening all your muscles. Again, tight core, tight bum, pushing strong shoulders, feet together. I cannot tell you how important that is. If your feet are flailing around, it's gonna be way too hard to balance. I bent my legs on the way down. All that year, all those years, 22 years in the gym. Come on, Erica. No, I'm gonna keep going. Roll your wrists out every now and again so they don't get sore.
So what I notice about me right now, my pressure is on my palms. I don't want my pressure on my palms. I want to shift it to my fingers like I was talking about in the beginning. may take you a million tries, but the important part is we keep trying, we keep getting better. And I'll say that one counts for the sake of this video. But anyway, I'm out of breath now because I'm out of shape, but this quarantine will hopefully give me time to get in shape before we get in, uh, get back into the new gym. You guys are going to be so excited to see all that the Graf family, the owners of Champion, have done. It's insane. Huge ceilings, lots of space, new equipment, foam pits. When you get back to the gym, be sure to give them the greatest thank you ever because it's it's gonna be amazing but thank you guys for um supporting us and being a true champion we love you guys so much happy quarantining everybody miss you guys